Here we have a Dell Alienware 17 inch R4 that was mailed in for no power. Customer is paying for expedited service so we can do it for him quick. And let's read what the customer wrote. Same shorting issue as your YouTube video with the title Dell Alienware M17 R4 laptop, no power repair, CPU short. That's all what the customer wrote. So we have a video with a similar issue. That's what the customer is saying. I know we have a lot of videos on Dellian Alienware, Dellian, Dell Alienware, but I do not recall which one this is. Let's take a look at the board and see what's going on. We already disassembled the board right here, and we're gonna inspect to see what's going on and why the board is not turning on. We did confirm that the laptop does not power on. So we disassembled the board and it's time to test and see why the board is not powering on. Our power connector connects right over here via cable. So we're gonna start by checking this area. That's where the DC power cable connects, DC in. And here we see two MOSFETs, two power MOSFETs, meter in diode mode. And let's check to see if we have a short. And we do. Go to resistance mode. And if we measure here, we have a zero ohm reading. So we have it that short on this MOSFET. Great. At least we know what the problem is. We have a short. But where is the short coming from? What we're gonna do is inject about 1.2 volts on the shorted area of the MOSFET and we're gonna monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what is getting hot. And we will try to narrow it down to one component. So I'm going to start by plugging the ground cable to one of the USB connectors. And we're going to grab the thermal camera. And let's inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET, the drain. Right now our voltage injection tool is drawing 1.27 amps. And we do see heat at the CPU heat exactly at the CPU. Now a heat spot on the CPU does not mean the CPU is bad. We have to check the VCO circuit which is right under the CPU. We have a lot of MOSFETs here so we have to check this area and see what's going on. Or on the other hand it could be that the CPU is faulty. If the CPU received a higher voltage than what it can handle then most likely we have a bad blown or shorted CPU. So let's take a look and see what's going on. I mean, right off the bat, I see something going on here. Look at this. I see this coloration on those inductors. And that's a very good sign that we may have a problem with one of those MOSFETs. But a problem on one of those MOSFETs could also mean a dead CPU. Like I said, if the CPU received a higher voltage than what it can handle, then most likely our CPU is gone. And I've worked on similar laptops before where the CPU was bad. But... We cannot call it a bad CPU yet. We have to look and see what's going on here. And honestly, I do not know where to start. Heat was coming from the CPU and not from any one of those MOSFETs. So we have to manually guess where the problem is coming from. I mean, right now, if you are to guess which MOSFET is faulty, which one would you say? This or this? or any one of those. How many do you have? One, two, three, four, five. Five MOSFETs. I mean, right now, even if we cannot guess exactly which MOSFET is causing the short, we only have five MOSFETs, so we can take them out one by one to figure out where the short is coming from. Right now, if I measure this inductor using the multimeter, I'm reading about one ohm, and I know the meter is about 0 0.3 ohms over, so we are reading about 0 0.7 ohms. If we measure this one, I have a higher reading, 1.4 ohms, which will equal to 1.1 ohms. So this one is reading less. Maybe the short is coming from this one. It has lower resistance, 1.1 1 .1 minus 0 0.3, so we are at 0 0.8 ohms. And here we have about 2.5 ohms. 
it's reading 2.5 ohms now and fluctuating between 5 to 2.5 and if we read this one about 1.7 ohms so this one is reading the lowest we're going to start by removing this MOSFET let's see if removing this MOSFET will clear the short chip is out. Before we measure, let's make sure no two pins are touching. I mean, some pins by default are touching, like those four here, they are all one pad. Those three, they are all one pad. The ones on top are all one pad. One, two, three. This one is alone so on and so forth. So some of them are connecting to each other. All right, so we are all good. And like I said, it's okay if those bridge because they are all on the same pad. But let me apply more flux. So we can get some nice joints. And just like that. Let's see, do we still have a short? Meter in diet mode. And we're gonna go back to our DCN MOSFET and measure at the drain right here. And do we still have a short? Wow, the short is gone. Wow. We took an educational guess and we nailed it. I picked the correct MOSFET. Now we need to solder a replacement MOSFET. I have another similar Dell Alienware 17 inch laptop that was donated to us after it was deemed a no-fix. So we're gonna remove the MOSFET from this board. This one had a CPU problem. So we're gonna desolder a MOSFET from this board and solder it onto the customer's board. Whoa, what happened? Right, and now if we go and measure the MOSFET at the drain, let's make sure that we do not have a short after soldering the MOSFET. We don't have a short. Great. All we have to do is clean up and test. That's it. We're done. All right, we reassembled the laptop, as you see here. But unfortunately, the laptop was deemed a no-fix because of a CPU-related problem. I mean, I knew from the very beginning that we would either replace the MOSFET, get rid of the short, and the laptop will work, or that the laptop will not work because of a CPU-related problem. And that's what happened. Today's day two. You see me with a different shirt. I spent more time working on the laptop off-camera. I went over front of the board, back of the board. I inspected all the components and did not come across anything faulty. I also inspected the board under a thermal camera and 
I did not see any abnormal heat spots. So at this point, I'm not going to spend any more time working on it. We got to deem it in no fix, invoice, and mail this back to the customer. Invoicing as far as the repair temp plus return shipping. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.